if it's reasonable and prudent to adhere to that path. And, and you do expect to be selling, obviously, with interest rates where they are, some of this can be sold off at a profit. Uh, I want to be careful how I say that. I can say for the Treasury portfolio that that will be the case. Okay. All right. Um, I suspect you know this, but there's not, in terms of the three options of where we go in the future, there's not unanimity uh, of that's, thought that's my up here um, uh, on either side of the aisle. So I will confess that I am a public utility model type guy. Now, it sounds like you don't particularly like that term. So let's, I guess it falls within option three in your set of options. Uh, let's call it instead something where there is a guarantee or federal reinsurance uh, that is available to multiple entities that is, uh, as you suggested, explicit and limited, as opposed to the Fannie and Freddie model where the guarantee was implicit and unlimited. Uh, what is your reaction to that sort of model going forward? I think it has a lot of merit. Uh, I think it has a lot of merit, but again, you want to be careful to design in a way to make sure you meet those tests. And again, I want to emphasize something that Mr. Henseling made a uh, suggestion, which is that you, if you're going to have the government provide a guarantee through FHA or through some um, hybrid mechanism like you described, what you need to make sure that it is priced to cover risk of loss, the taxpayer is substantially ahead, the taxpayer is behind a bunch of private capital in that context, not ahead of it, and you want to make sure that you leave politics out of the setting of the basic fee. That's very important. And you can't create a system that's going to be vulnerable to your successors uh, and uh, lobbyists, other stakeholders, trying to uh, put pressure to underprice those guarantees in the future. I couldn't agree with you more on those points. Um, if we don't do something like that, if we do something that has less involvement, my concern, the housing market is such a huge portion of the economy as we witnessed in 2008. Um, if, if left without some stability to it provided by the government, you'll have vicissitudes as banks, which they often do in other ends, they, they get all excited and all of a sudden they want to loan everybody in the world money for a house, and then after they have some losses, all of a sudden they don't want to loan anybody uh, of, of, for a house, and this happens in other segments of the economy. Um, but it, and it affects those segments, makes them very volatile, but it doesn't have that huge an effect on the overall economy because they're not that big. But the housing market is so big that if we subject it to those vicissitudes, I'm afraid that we will have uh, some uh, significant uh, additional volatility in the overall economy. You agree? I think there is that risk, and you stated it very well, and that's why I want to emphasize over and over again that when you look at alternative models that look like they have a more of what people say a private character to it, a more purely private character to it, most of those systems out there involve banks holding all of that risk. And as you know, the history of financial crisis is largely a history of banks and real estate together. And the government ultimately is there. It's just behind the banks with this implicit support that they don't charge for, still leaves the taxpayer expected, so, I mean, exposed to loss. So, Again, the, the, the really difficult challenge is to try to make sure you have a system where you have more conservative standards for underwriting. Homeowners hold more equity in their homes. Banks let, hold more capital against risk. Let, let me the government's in. role is very limited. Let me sneak the unemployment rate unexpectedly fell in February, adding to speculations that the U.S. economic recovery is building momentum. The jobless rate ticked down to 8.9 percent, its lowest level in two years, according to the Labor Department. At the very least, we're at a stability point. It's not getting worse. Uh, you know, it may stay here, but uh, hopefully it'll keep improving with the economy. Hiring picked up in most industries, but was strongest in manufacturing, construction, and health care. Demand for temporary workers also grew in February, but state and local government payrolls slumped and held back additional job growth. The Labor Department's numbers have very little accuracy, so they're just good for uh, uh, looking, observing trends and improving situation as opposed to a, uh, uh, a deteriorating one. The U.S. Labor Department's report is good news. However, another survey paints an entirely different picture. According to Gallup, the job front in February deteriorated. Unemployment shot up to 10.3 percent from 9.8 percent in January, and if anything, the economic outlook for unemployment has stayed the same or deteriorated in the past year. 
According to Gallup, the percentage of part-time workers who want full-time work worsened considerably in February, and a larger percentage is working part-time and wanting full-time work now than was the case a year ago. Underemployment, a measure that combines part-time workers wanting full-time work with those who are unemployed, surged in February to nearly 20 percent. Some people agree with the survey. There is not a chance in this time that unemployment has dropped. You have more of these fast food joints going up where people are working three jobs. I feel like things have stayed relatively the same, if not gotten worse. According to Gallup, the deteriorating job market combined with surging gas prices, budget battles at the federal and state levels, and declines on Wall Street have also undercut consumer confidence. What do you think about rising gas prices? <laughs> uh, they're driving me crazy. They can't go much higher. If we get oil at 110 or $120 a barrel sustained for at least two to three months, I think you have to really be prepared for a pullback in the economy, uh, uh, either a stall or, or, or a recession. Some economists are predicting the unemployment rate could drop to 7% by late 2012. In that case, they say, the situation in the job market has to change from what it is today. Rhonda Pence, Press TV, Washington. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, March 5th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome to this news bulletin, everyone. Uh, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I just posted a poll um, as of right now. Uh, how do you feel about the unemployment figures? Uh, the first option is we aren't getting the truth. Unemployment is worsening. Uh, unemployment is about the same. Unemployment hasn't gotten better recently or not much change or not sure. You can uh, select multiple answers and you can uh, change your vote, uh, which is an option I kind of like. I usually post all, actually, I always post all my links, but uh, recently, uh, just due to uh, the you know internet issues and that uh, the computer problems that come up I may not have all the links on there but I try to get as much as I possibly can uh, last time I didn't even have enough room in the video to include all the links so I had to put it in the next one uh, but they're there and I spent a lot of time putting up there so check them out um, also if you want to um, subscribe to GGN you can subscribe via email right here um, you can follow us right here or uh, you go down to the bottom of my website here and uh, you can follow us here on Facebook. I keep getting more and more people now, and I just put that up not too long ago. So uh, thank you for joining me. We're going to start off with the economy here. Uh, world stocks fall. Dollar slips as oil jumps. Uh, world stocks and the U.S. dollar fell on Friday as oil prices rose on escalating violence in Libya, overshadowing a U.S. jobs report that showed the economic recovery shifting up a gear. Gold advanced above 14.30 an ounce, and U.S. Treasury debt prices gained as a Libyan turmoil drove a flight to safety. Then we have uh, Asian stocks from Bloomberg. Asian stocks rise as better economic data offset oil price rise concerns. Then we have gold. Gold gains 1%. Silver jumps on oil rally in. Libya. Uh, gold and silver futures rally. Gold futures rally and silver hit its highest point in nearly 31 years as jitters about rising oil prices boosted. The metals is a refuge of investments. Then we have crude at two and a half year high on reports of fighting near Libya oil facilities. And then we have uh, this right here. Minister says petrol prices could hit $2 um, two pounds, I'm sorry, per liter. And that's important. It's per liter, which is a lot. Um, British government minister says uh, continuation of the crisis in Libya and the countries in the wider region can shoot petrol prices up to two pounds a liter. And uh, the Brits um, have also, well, they've been probably longer than the U.S., been hit by uh, really harsh uh, 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 gasoline prices or petrol, that's what they call it. And uh, But it's spreading everywhere now, and everyone's starting to feel the pinch. Oil could hit $200 a barrel if Arab unrest spreads to Saudi Arabia. And it just makes you wonder. That's what they want, right? They want it to spread. They already know the... Uh, um, the people that are steering this, these groups that have an invested interest in these, uh, quote, revolutions, uh, day of rages, uh, they're going to profit off of all this. Yeah, like I said in the recent videos, so they do want to see unrest to spread to Saudi Arabia. And guess what? It is. As of today, the Saudis uh, banned pro pro protest, and they're cracking down harsh, uh, deploying troops. So... Um, so that just goes to show you that, uh, you know, this is something that the West and these oil companies want. 
and uh, says here fuel prices are soaring gas prices have recorded their biggest one week increase since hurricane katrina in 2005 rising gas prices hit home jump at the pump squeezes households and exurbs could lead to more foreclosures the miami exurb flourished in the housing boom but has fallen hard uh, during the bust with one of the highest foreclosure rates in the nation for the past two years rising gasoline prices are making a bad situation even worse saudi america rises april crude prices for asia northwestern europe so uh, that's going to be increasing for china and uh, most of europe oil wealth must be shared with citizens says soros uh, citizens of oil producing nations must see more benefits from their country's national resources billionaire investor george soros has told the bbc so and uh, that's a bunch of crap, right? Because the U.S. is sitting on a bunch of reserves. Do you think the people, the American people, are going to see uh, the benefits or the, the profits from the oil in America? Hell no, they're not. Uh, it's mostly going to go towards the military uh, when there's still unrest and the shit hits the fan, right? That's who it's going to go to is the military and sustaining the government, the control mechanism. So we're moving on to commodities, and you can see right here, uh, November, December, and then uh, uh, February here, and now March. And look at those, look at that climbing, dude, in the commodity prices. And then look at all these increases. Brent crude. Um, now trading at a $115, almost $116 per barrel. It's up a dollar. And um, heating oil's up $4. Uh, natural gas up 31 cents. And then we move down here and uh, we have cocoa down $56, $76. Coffee down a dollar, which is good. Corn is uh, down $8. Cotton up $7. Cotton is holding strong and wheat holding strong, $10. Uh, and then we move down here to soybeans up two dollars gold up twelve dollars an ounce at one thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars silver hitting records here thirty five dollars an ounce up one dollar and um, that's pretty much what we have for commodities today thirty five dollars is a new record for the silver so you might want to get into that copper demand in china may grow seven percent this year on growth Ch and copper as well has been uh, uh hitting records too um the week ahead, U.S. dollars seen lower next week after jobs data. The U.S. dollar is likely to fall in the week ahead as investors continue to bet that interest rates in the eurozone will rise ahead of those world's largest economy. Then we have a lot of this type stuff going out there. It's mostly uh, propaganda, public relations, uh, you know, basically wanting to get rid of the U.S. dollar's reserve currency. And uh, is the dollar's role slipping? So, you know, that's what they want you to think. And um, it doesn't have to be, but if we have a Federal Reserve System and we have not a controlled government. So, yeah, I mean, the dollar is eventually going to go. And uh, like I said, these international bodies and councils and bank, international banks and private organizations, they want the dollar to not be the reserve currency anymore. And they want to bring the U.S. down. They've been doing it for the past 50 years, exporting all of our jobs and uh, giving uh, incentives to corporations to move out of the country. So this is a big plan that's been going on, deindustrializing, and uh, we may have some agricultural um, uh, markets or uh, economy here in, in the U.S., but um, it's never going to be the same as what it was. Most farmers won't even own their land. They'll have barbed wire fences around them with security and helicopters. I mean, that's eventually what we're looking at. And to protect what? To protect a bunch of poisonous GMO food sprayed with pesticides so and fluoride and all that other crap. Utah considers return to gold, silver coins. And uh, you can check that out. Link will be posted. Uh, Euro tops $1.40 on rate speculations. Treasuries decline as job growth. Inflation is way on fixed income demand. Then we have Albert Edwards on the surge cost of food and energy eating up American wages. U.S. Corn Belt braces for major flooding in spring. That means increases in prices again. And it's all due to what? Well, it could be due to natural changes, but it could also be due to the massive spring that is going on globally for weather modification in order to fight uh, global warming and that's the irony right the irony is that the spraying actually causes warming just pay attention guys just look when they're spraying it, it will be warmer outside they did it yesterday too it says u.s unemployment rate drops says a report uh, 1500 british uh lose their job every day and then we have this one right here yikes you won't believe the real jobless numbers federal docs contradict 8.9 percent hyped by media and it says right here the real U, uh, u.s unemployment rate maybe 22 percent for february not the 8.9 percent reported by the government according to economist john williams author of the shadow government statistics website who has argued for years that the federal government manipulates the reporting of an economic
economic data for political purposes. So you can check that out. 22%, the real unemployment rate. So there you go. Those are people that are no longer uh, collecting uh, benefits but are not working. This is GGN, and I'm Darko.